Hello, today I am happy to release version 1.1 of the Zoya Librarian. It's been a, a work in progress for the last few months um, between waiting on the Zoya updates and getting all the, the UI and the features stable. Um, so you, you can find the whole change logs uh, in the repo as well as downloads for the new executables. Um, so this will be a lot shorter than the, the previous video which went over all the features uh, Today we'll just talk about the changes and any updates that have been made um, to the app. Um, so first things first, we'll start with the, the patch storage view. Um, you'll, you'll see some, some UI changes. There's um, shorter names for the tabs. There's a, a bit of updates when it comes to the, the status bar in the bottom. But let's, let's focus on what um, each tab, how, how things have changed. So if we click on a patch, uh, the first thing we see different is this highlighted um, link. Uh, so if you click this link, it'll bring you to the, the patch storage site um, containing that patch, um, which I realize would be a, a useful feature to add, so that was easy enough. Uh, this works in both patch storage and local storage view. Um, however, any patches that you upload yourself that aren't on patch storage won't have a link um, because they're didn't originate from patch storage. Um, so yeah, we click there, it'll go to an external browser and, and open it up. Uh, for instance. Uh, some other changes that have been made, um, there, there wasn't much done on the patch storage view. There's, uh, I believe there's an extra couple of status toolbar updates. So if I download a patch, it'll tell me download complete for a brief second, um, just to give little status me messages. Otherwise, there's really not much that was done here. Um, we'll look at the, the tool menu, the, um, the, the shortcuts. Um, this will differ for, for, per flat platform. Um, but the shortcuts have been changed to sort of smarter indicators, um, just to make things a little easier. And the documentation and help has been sort of, um, it used to be in two different menus now, just it's all displayed um, as is. And these have all been updated since um, 1.0 and, and the Zoe update um, to reflect those changes. Um, so one of the, the bigger features uh, revolve things in the local storage tab. So we'll move over there. So there's a number of, of changes here. The first one being uh, we can now rate patches. So there's a new rating column. Um, and this will apply to an individual patch or as well as multiple versions. Multiple versions can have uh, an overall rating as well as individual ratings for each of their patches inside. Um, it also has this link to patch storage because it originated on patch storage. Um, that applies to all the patches in here. Uh, so back to rating. So let's say we want to update the rating for a patch. We can just either click and it goes up to five or you can type in a number and it'll update your rating for that patch. Um, so along with this, you can now sort by rating we can do a rating high to low. And when we reset, we see that rating has now been reflected. We can also click away and then reset the, the sort. All right, so that was a requested feature um, just to give us some, you know, some semblance of an organization for the patches. Um, certain ones that you like a lot, you can Give it five other ones that you're just trying out you can you know give it different numbers um, this does require a change to the back end um, the file structures the, the the patches that you have saved so the first time that you load this version it's going to take a little while longer just to update all the patches that you have with that rating object as well as in general before we had some issues with um, upgrading to newer versions of the app. Now it's versioned properly so that if you load up a beta version, 
you know, it's not going to cause issues. If you load up 1.0, um, sorry, if you had beta or 1.0 before this and load and open 1.1, you won't have any issues. Um, that's been tested to make sure that it's versioned. And that'll continue going forward just to make things a, a little easier. Um, also, in general, the UI has been given an update in terms of the default sizes. Uh, so everything is sort of organized in a way that looks nice. It's not sort of cluttered how it was before. Um, so it, there's a better default sizing uh, applied. Um, let's see. There's been some updates to the visuals, visualizer, one of the, the cooler up, one of the cooler features of the app, in my opinion. Um, first things, uh, it actually displays the correct values for things before it would give estimates or, or sorry, before it would give not the right uh, parameter value or not the right page number. So those things have been updated as well as things like connections were incorrect. So all of that has been sort of retooled with the, the binary code decoder um, to actually reflect what's what's on the unit. So we see here there's there's four pages, so we should only be able to go up to three, and then it stops. Um, so there's there's things like that, and then you know displaying the the value on a scale from you know, zero to one, um, and then actually showing the right. Um, connections. There are some issues with which connections were being displayed. There's also this expand um, button, which is experimental for now. Uh, that'll come in in 1.2. We're working on uh, the patch expander, which shows the routing in, in sort of a, a larger sense. And I'll include a, include a screenshot um, so you can see what an example of that looks like. Um, what else? Yep, so there's some minor things related to version histories. Uh, so before, when you would try to export a patch uh, that was listed as multiple versions, you had to go into the, the history to export them individually. Now you can export as one large patch, if you'd like, or one large collection of patches. And there's some, there's some fail safes in there to avoid you know, having more than 64 patches in a folder or, or things like that. And if you're overwriting things, it'll let you know. Um, in general, there's more UI display about what's going on. Um, I'll show that off. I just want to make sure that my SD card is set. Um, also, if we look in the multiple versions, it used to show the the file number. It used to have like 000 Zoya Cynic Synth. Um, so now that's been simplified just to show the name of the patch, right? The, the numbers don't mean anything um, in the local storage view. It's just when you go to the SD card or the, the folders that they had to be placed in the, you know, in the correct order for Zoyo to read it. Um, let's see. All right, so that's, I believe that's it for the local storage view. We'll move on to the SD card. SD card has been, uh, the, the menu has been, or sorry, the UI has been retooled a little bit. The, the buttons are now horizontal instead of vertical. We have an additional fourth button. Um, so if you remember previously, This patch. If you remember previously, the, the exporting from local storage only went to this one to Zoya folder. Uh, we can set an export directory uh, other than that. So you can, when you click this button, it'll, it'll show you the um, your SD root, and then you can pick a, a folder or you can create a new one to use uh, for your export directory for that session. Otherwise, it'll default to this to Zoya folder. Um, so since we're, this is currently an empty folder. Let's try and load a multiple versions. Um, so it's telling you exporting to the folder on the SD card, it's saying which slot number do you want to drop these in. Um, it'll default to whichever the first open slot is. Um, so I will drop in, I think there's 25 patches here. So if I press OK, patches have been successfully exported. Cool. So if we go to our SD card and click on this, we see 26 patches. So now if I go back and I try to export, 
a single patch, it'll tell me the next slot available. Cool. Um, if I do something like this, I, I believe this one is, yeah. So this one I think has like 30 something patches. So if I go up to, let's say 35, 36, I believe that'll overflow. There we go. So because the, the version contains 30 patches, you have to select the slot that's 34 or lower, otherwise it, it'll overflow. Um, and that's just to prevent um, the export from overwriting onto slots that wouldn't appear on the Zoya. So if we instead keep it at 27, then we see here that they exported. Now there's also things like overwrite. So if instead of using this, the, the slot number, you can say, you know, go down one, this slot is occupied. Would you like to overwrite it? Sure. Right. We still have the same idea of you can, you can delete an entire folder. You can import things. You can, uh, you can import it as a version history. You can import it as individual patches. Um, just making it a little a little cleaner for how exports uh, should work. Um, and similarly, if we look back in our local storage, um, can I import where is it? If I import um, two patches, let's say I import these two, and then I try to import the rest as a version history, it'll tell me that two patches were already saved. Right. And then it has this little show details button which says which patches fail to import. Right. This was a requested feature. Um, um, sometimes when you try to import things, it would already exist, and people wanted to know which patch that was referring to. Uh, so this menu, uh, this display, um, we'll, we'll tell you exactly which ones. So we go back, we see a partial version history which has 28 patches and then these two which are left alone. All right. So then we'll move on to folders which had a label update. Um, so there was some confusion about what a bank was. So we're ditching the bank terminology and sticking with folders. Because a folder is what you load onto your SD card and then that gets loaded onto Zoya. Um, just makes things a little simpler. So all the sort of references to banks have been removed. It's now folders. Uh, otherwise the functionality is pretty much exactly the same um, with the similar set of messages about exporting and moving things so that way you don't overwrite slots. Um, we have uh, the same sort of idea of loading and, and exporting folders. Um, so if I move a bunch of these patches over, you know, this is pretty full, I can then export to my SD card and then say, all right, um, let me export, just export. It tells you where that went go to local storage, or sorry, um, SD card, we see the new patch, and we see here it actually pre-filled, right? So one thing to note about when you're loading folders onto the Zoya is um, it's actually a merge. It's not a true, you know, overwrite. So anything, any slot that is empty, meaning that there's no file there, will retain the previous patches from the previous folder that was on there. So it defaults to filling um, the rest of the empty slots with blank patches, so that way it overwrites instead of does a merge um, to the unit. And so that was a, an added feature. Otherwise, um, Everything is pretty much the same. We see the rating in here. We can, again, sort by rating uh, that we have defined in the local storage view. And 
and so on. Um, otherwise, the, the app works pretty much the same as it has been. It's just a bunch of updates um, to, for, to make things a little easier to work with terminology-wise, um, UI-wise, as well as the, the pop-up messages that inform you of what's going on. Um, and then there's a number of fixes that have been done. Um, that's probably really the, the highlight here. So I mentioned the passenger coding has been fixed. Um, uh, we, we fixed the, the bank terminology and replaced it with folders. There were some issues with the app loading on Big Sur, and that has been resolved uh, for Mac machines. Um, a number of uh, other fixes um, that are included in the change logs. Um, as of right now, there's um, a couple outstanding issues on the on the repo that I can't quite reproduce, but I'll, I'll keep working on, on trying to improve those for a future release. Um, but primarily, my focus is on the patch expander view uh, that I talked about before. Right, so being able to show this routing in a in a more definite way instead of on these sort of discrete pages. Um, we're also working on some patch editing and patch creation tools, which is exciting. Um, and then have been working on the sidelines uh, on an iPad version of the app, which I think will be useful. Um, you can be more portable, um, can load your SD, you know, maybe quicker. Potentially, I just think it'd be a cool uh, addition to sort of this this app. Uh, yeah. So if there's any questions, please let me know. If you find any issues, um, you can leave a um, you can raise one in, in GitHub. Or send me a message. Otherwise, um, thanks a lot.